Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff. Cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> we worked all day on this. Um, so, um, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to translate electric guitar riffs into acoustic rhythm guitar. Okay, now let me take the bag <laughs> off of the couch. Um, okay, back to business. So, Usually when we hear electric guitar players try to play their riffs on an acoustic guitar, it sounds a little inspirationless, right? It lacks dynamics, it lacks spirit, it lacks the, the vibrance that the electric guitar playing has. And um, there is a way to fix this, actually, and that is to not be afraid of the strings. Electric guitar players who are mainly electric players um, are used to soft strings so they can uh, attack them and the strings are very flexible and then when they encounter an acoustic guitar and they want to play acoustic versions of their songs um, they're kind of afraid of the strings and that produces this dynamicless inspirationless result so the idea here is to think um, about the acoustic guitar as a percussion instrument as well. Which means that if you want to play a whole riff, uh, you will want to add rhythm guitar to it and play the riff in between the chords. Okay, I'm going to show you in a second what I mean. And if you want to play power chords, then don't be afraid to hit the strings and use your hand to create percussion, just like fingerstyle players do. Okay, but before we get into the lesson, I want to remind you all that there are now two weekly lessons here on Lickenruff. Two weekly lessons uh, made available and possible thanks to you, my audience, my viewers, my students, whom I love, each and every one of you, and especially those of you who support me on Patreon, and those of you who purchase my courses, my Complete Guitar Freedom course series, um, and if this is news to you, who is watching right now, check the links below in the description and go uh, check out my courses, the Complete Guitar Freedom course series, or support me on Patreon. I thank you in advance for anything you choose to get. So thank you very much. Right, so what do I mean by uh, do not be afraid of the strength? Um, let's start with the, the most basic idea, power chords. Usually, power chords played on an acoustic guitar sound like this. Okay? Now this was a diminished chord, which is also played in a power chord setting sometimes. So, okay? Now, do not be afraid of the strings. Hit them. Use your percussive hand, use your picking hand as percussion, okay, a percussion instrument. Okay, play something like this. Okay, create the noise, okay, imitate the distortion, hit the strings, okay, and when you hit the strings, you imitate percussion as well. You don't even need to use your hand. Okay, you can just play. Okay, and don't be afraid to, okay, to um, to mutilate the chord. Okay, and that way you imitate the electric guitar's dynamics as best you can on the instrument. But what about riffs? What about complete riffs? For example, you have the Californication guitar riff. And most players, when they approach it on an acoustic guitar, they play it the same way as it's recorded. And if you're the only one playing, you don't have a band with you. You can't play the riff as it was recorded. You can't just play okay, this and this. You can't, you need to add more. And it's not enough to add the bass solo. It's not enough to just do this. If you want to back 
your fellow musicians or to just back up a fellow friend who is a singer or a bunch of friends who want to sing the song, you need to back them up. You need to be the band, okay? So, okay, you need to play the rhythm. You need to play the full backing. You need to play percussion with the instrument as well using your pick. So you can play something like this. Okay? You can play the zero one on the second string with the rest of the chord. Okay? And you can play you can imitate the drums by playing down down up and then the zero one. Okay? On the bass string. And then Okay, strum the rest of the chord with zero one on the first string. Okay, and then you can do okay, you can do the two and then zero hammer onto two, pull off to zero on the D string. Okay, with the rest of the chord. Okay, it doesn't sound good when you just separate it and play it um, okay isolated, but when you play it as a sequence. Okay, and then you have the C note on the fifth string, and then you have, okay? Now, again, it's the same idea as the rhythm I played on A minor, but with the F6 chord setting that is in the riff. And it doesn't really matter if you play everything else, because you're not playing, you're not playing everything. You're creating a variation on the riff. You're creating, okay? So it doesn't sound good when it's isolated, but played together. Okay, it sounds a lot better than just playing. Okay, throughout the whole song. Um, so when you need to uh, get into the groove, when the drums kick in into the song, you can start playing. Okay, so again, it's, okay, I'm playing the power chord, and then, okay, the zero two on the third string, okay, with whatever comes along with it. I don't really care whether I'm playing the open strings around it because it's in the chord. As long as, okay, I'm accentuating this, then I'm fine. Okay? The same goes for Stand By Me. Okay? If you want to play Stand By Me, if someone wants to sing it, then you're wasting your talent by just playing... Okay, just playing the bass. You can turn this into a chord progression and it's a really simple chord progression, so why not? And then the bass solo becomes a lot stronger, okay? You can play something like this. Okay, you can play the heads of the chords. You can slide into the G and then you can play the head of the C chord and then vibrate it. Okay, and you can rake back to G, okay? You can turn it into a badass riff. Okay, back to, okay, and then F. And then you can vibrate this chord. Okay, and then open and play strings A and D. Okay, because it doesn't really matter. As long as you have A there, okay, you can go, okay, you can go to G. So, you're having fun as well while someone is singing the song. You see, think 
chord wise, not riff wise. Try to fit the riff over chords or try to fit chords over the riff. Okay, try to be two guitar players at the same time. I know this is easier said than done, but I just showed you how how possible and how approachable this is if you just put your mind to it and play and actually play the chords of the song. And it can work with anything actually. It can work with any uh, any riff that has a chord progression over it. If if uh, the riff is way 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 too complicated and too quick, then you can use what I showed you um, with the power chords. You can just torture your guitar. You can abuse the strings. Okay, you can you can create noise. Okay, you can add chords where there are none. You can add power chords if the lick is just single notes. Okay, and the more buzzing you get, oh no, the guitar police is outside. Blasphemy, playing electric riffs on an acoustic. Oh no. Right, so, so uh, you can do a... Uh, okay, you can play the riff itself and then play the chord. Okay, and you can play both notes. Okay, and you can palm mute. You can do whatever you want. Okay, just remember, you can abuse the strings. Okay, if you break a string, just put a new strong a new string on okay nothing is going to happen if you break a string have fun with your guitar okay T try to imitate the electric guitar sound with your hands only okay Th this feels so good when you actually let yourself go and actually do this because you don't need distortion you don't need drums you have everything here just the just your hands your pick and the strings you can create a full band sound if you only stop being afraid of the strengths. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next lesson. Go abuse your guitar. Bye for now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.